G'day. Well, here's a wonderfully counterintuitive puzzle for you. Imagine that you have some ground and a vertical wall. So far, so good. Now, imagine that we have a ladder leaning up against the wall. I've deliberately drawn it in quite steep so for reasons that will become obvious. And imagine, or at least locate the point exactly halfway up the ladder. So this length equals that length. Now, let's consider this scenario. If the base of the ladder was pushed into the bottom of the wall, so the ladder was here, and it fell outwards, what path would that run follow? The one in the centre of the ladder. I think you'd agree, provided the base of the ladder stayed at the base of the wall, that the ladder would fall out, the end of the ladder would follow an arc, forming a quarter of a circle, and this point here would also follow a circular path. That's quite easy. The question I have here is, instead of the base of the ladder going into the base of the wall, what if the ladder slipped? So the base moved out and the top of the ladder slipped down the wall, staying in contact with it. What then is the path followed by that rung? If you happen to be halfway up a ladder, this is the practical application, if you are halfway up a very long extension ladder, and it slipped down the wall, what path do you follow? Well, we have some options. Here we go. I'll give you three of them. There's the ground. The wall is vertical, of course. One option is that the centre of the ladder will follow a dead straight path down to here. Of course, this distance would equal that. Oh, I can hear fireworks. It's, it's people celebrating New Year's Eve. It's a few hours off yet. Uh, the second one is that the middle rung of the ladder might follow an outward curve and the other option is that it might follow a curve like this. So the question is, which of these occurs? Now, when I asked people this, students, adults, I get people choosing all these options. Perhaps the most popular one is this one. It may well be true. It may not be. I want you to think about it for just a moment. Pause the video and see if you can come up with a reason not just a guess, but a reason why you might adopt one of these. And then I'll t show you the solution. Okay, welcome back. Here's the solution for you. And it's based on some very, very simple geometry. And here it is here. If I drew a rectangle, so that these are right angles, and opposite, opposite sides of equal length and parallel, so it is a rectangle, what can you tell me about the two diagonal lines of a rectangle? Well, they're both equal in length, and they bisect each other in the centre of the rectangle. So the point where the two diagonals cross or intersect divides this diagonal line in, in halves exactly and this line in halves exactly. Now let's apply this thinking to the ladder against the wall. <clears throat> if I take this position of the ladder, for example, and I imagine a rectangle drawn here.
And instead of just having this ladder, I imagine another ladder here. I think you can agree that within this rectangle, the two ladders are of equal length. And I think you can agree that the halfway point on this ladder that leads into the wall is in exactly the same location as the halfway point on the ladder leading away from the wall. Now it turns out that as the ladder falls or slips, I really haven't left a lot of room here, so I'll, if we take another position for the ladder, let's say the ladder's already slipped to this position, and we're looking where the halfway rung is, if we draw our rectangle in, we can see that it corresponds to the exact position of the ladder that's falling out from the wall. So here's the ladder slipping down the wall, here's the ladder falling out. Both the same length ladder, the middle rung is exactly in the same position. So you can see that the shape of the rectangle will change as the two ladders fall or slip. Consequently, the path that this point follows for one ladder is exactly the same path that it follows for the other. That means that just as the centre of this ladder, as it fell out, follows a semi or a quarter circle arc, in the same way the ladder that slips down the wall will follow, the centre rung will follow the exact same arc. This is the correct answer. It's rather counterintuitive. Most of us think the ladder slides down, and because the ladder slides, we, we think of the ladder sliding like an, an envelope, and we think of this position, but we're not thinking about where the actual centre of the ladders are in every location. We're thinking about the, the position of the ladder forming a, what we call an envelope or an envelope in mathematics. So that's the counterintuitive answer. This is the correct answer. And it makes you realise that when you slide, when, when a ladder slides away from the wall and you fall, you initially move away from the wall and then you fall vertically. You actually hit the ground in a, vertically uh, and that's why there's so much damage caused. Even if it's a small ladder, you can break arms, hit your face, break your teeth and, and knock yourself unconscious and so forth. It's not a gentle descent like this, not that that would be extremely gentle, where you end up sliding out away from the wall. The final part of your fall is vertical. So there it is, an interesting bit of geometry, all based on some fairly simple geometry relating to rectangles. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, then please share it leave a comment, like the video. If you're not already a subscriber, then I encourage you to subscribe to learn about future puzzles and other aspects of mathematics. And as always, I thank you for watching and wish you uh, a very happy 2015.